Welcome to CNN Cleaning's Cleaning Chemical Class, where we talk about the chemicals that make cleaning clean. So you may have noticed I've lost some weight since the first video. Okay, not so much in real life, but at least for this series. I think this will be a little easier to put together, which means I can do a better job of putting out videos in a timely manner. If you like this style, let me know in the comments. To be honest, I kind of stole it. I really like the videos by Sam Onella. And if you haven't watched his channel, you should go check it out. Especially if you like that quirky, nerdy stuff with some four-letter words thrown in for good measure. Oh well, on to chemistry. Here we go. In the last video, we talked about this guy, a detergent, and how he works together with his friends to surround lipids or oils so that they can be dissolved into water and rinsed away. So in this video, we're going to build on this by looking at a tool that cleaners use to remove more complex structures, like urine. Enzymes. Enzymes are a specific type of protein that contains a specifically shaped docking station that allows complex structures to grab on, causing them to break apart into simpler and easier to remove structures, or sometimes docking two simple structures and bonding them together. You've probably heard the names of some enzymes before, without even realizing it. If you ever heard a fancy name ending in A's, that was an enzyme. For example, lactase, an enzyme that breaks down lactose from milk into glucose and galactose, simple sugars our bodies can digest. Lactase is what is missing when a person is lactose intolerant. Or maltase, which breaks down maltose into glucose. And that reminds me of a simple trick to see how enzymes work. Starches, like pasta or potatoes, are made up of a complex sugar called maltose. If you take a bite of baked potato, chew on it, and hold it in your mouth, the maltase in your saliva will break down the starch, and within just a short time, that potato will begin to be very sweet. You can also use maltase to break down potatoes to glucose in order to make vodka. So how do enzymes work? Well, enzymes have a specifically shaped receptor that will only fit certain compounds. It's like a lock and key relationship. Here's an example of an enzyme. So when this compound comes rolling in, it will latch onto that enzyme where it is unlocked and then released as two separate structures, ready to conquer the world alone. Enzymes are important to cleaners for a few reasons, but the most common one is urine removal. Urine's problems are really twofold. One is urea, which causes a lot of the odor, but is water-soluble and therefore easily removed. The bigger problem is uric acid, which is a complex salt that crystallizes and bonds very strongly to carpet fibers, padding, or pretty much anything, including ammonia, which is where most of urine smell comes from. The worst part of uric acid is when it's dry, you can barely tell it's there, but give it a little moisture and boom, odor overload again. That's why most urine treatments tend to smell worse before they smell better. Enzymes attack uric acid and break down the crystal into carbon dioxide, water, and nitrogen, which all easily evaporate. The ammonia and other solids can then be rinsed away or evaporate as well. When treating urine with enzymes, you're not even rinsing the urine salts out anymore. If you give the enzymes time to do their job, you're actually just removing the enzymatic wastes and the carriers that are used in your urine treatment. The urine is already gone. There are other enzymes used in cleaning. Remember that vegetable oil we looked at in the last video? There are enzymes for oils that will break the glycerin head off of the fatty acid chains, converting them back to a bunch of carbon dioxide and water. Some of that oil is physically eliminated. How much is determined by dwell time, temperature, and even physical contact? Agitation, anyone? And the best part of this is the oil cannot form again. Once the enzymes have broken the chain, it stays broken. And that's the key difference between a detergent, like the surfactant we talked about in the last video, and an enzyme. The detergent doesn't physically alter the soil. It only liquefies it and allows it to dissolve in water. The oil is still there. Enzymes destroy the molecular bonds of the soil. It's gone for good. So I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed learning something about how enzymes affect our cleaning abilities. Make sure you like and subscribe to check the rest of this series out. And tune in next time as we continue to add to our cleaning puzzle.
the next piece, oxidizers. Stay tuned. <laughs>